Hello, and welcome to our webinar on SmartList. My name is Robin Nixon. I'm from Software Solutions Group. And today we're going to be talking about SmartList. SmartList are a powerful querying tool that come out of the box with GP Dynamics and allow you to view and search through all of the raw data in the system. We're going to go over today, we're going to look at the fundamentals of SmartList. We're going to look at how to organize your data and bring other uh, data fields onto a SmartList. We're going to review how to personalize your SmartList and set up reminders on your home page. We're going to take a look closer into the specific modules and working with data, some common ways that companies use different SmartList, how to export your data from SmartList to Word and Excel, and finally, we're going to go. We're going to talk a little bit about SmartList options, and we'll touch on SmartList Builder and SmartList Designer. I'm going to jump around a bit uh, into different SmartLists to show you different data sets, and my goal is to get you thinking about how you could apply SmartList in your daily work, and how you might use SmartList in a little different way than you are today. Okay, so. First, let's navigate over to the main menu. You scroll down, Smart List. This is how you access Smart List. Also, you'll notice I have a Smart List icon on my menu bar, which is a little bit faster way of accessing Smart List. The way you can get this uh, icon on your menu bar, you just Right-click on the men main menu area, hit Customize, and in the first menu you see my SmartList icon. The way you add another icon is hit Add, and in the command bar you'll ch highlight the item you'd like, and in this case SmartList, I'll highlight again. If I hit OK, you notice it appears in the box, and it will now appear on the menu. I'm just going to delete off our second menu item, hit OK, and now we have SmartList here. When you open up SmartList, on the left side is a navigation pane. It includes a list of folders. These folders are, tie into the series or modules in GP, and they organize the data so that it's easier to find information. If I open up into the folders, you'll see another list of subfolders that further organize the data. And if I click into the subfolders, you'll notice there's little tiny clipboards. These are called views or favorites. And these views and favorites are based off of the smart list that each of the clipboards are under. Now you notice on the views in the smart list, there's an asterisk after some of these. That indicates that they're canned views that come with the GP. And there's one smart list that will have only an asterisk. If I hit on that, that will show me all the records in that particular smart list. And you notice at the bottom there's a display here, and that has calculated and explored, and it found 693 payables transactions in this smart list. It's completed, and it ran for the first thousand records with no search criteria. So just as an overview, smart lists that are typically used in GP for three different reasons. First, if we want to create some data that we want to export to Excel, we can export to Excel in this way, just by hitting the Excel button, brings up a list of our Excel report. The second way, if I double click on any of the line items in the smart list, it takes me to an inquiry window, and oftentimes smart lists are used as a quicker way of inquiring into specific transactions or specific data. They might be a little bit easier to use sometimes than the actual inquiry windows where you have to set up parameters. And the third way is that smart lists are used just as a tool to have data showing and used specifically where people work right off the smart list.
Okay. We're going to take a look at customer balances. Just going to hop over to this smart list under customers and customer balances. Now this is a view and you notice when I click on it, on the right side the content pane fills with the data from the smart list. And here I have a list of customers and their balances. And you'll notice I'm making the columns wider just by clicking on the header at the top and dragging, moving it back and forth to make it wider or narrower. The other thing I can do right with the top at the uh, top of the menu bar, sorry, top of the column bars, I can also click on them to get a sorting order. And we can either sort in ascending or descending order based on whatever column I'm pointing to. So I was sorting by customer number. If I click on the customer name, I can sort by customer name, or I can sort by customer balance. And this works for any column you have on a smart list. OK, and let's say I want to add a column. I'm going to add a column of state to this. I hit the columns command. Now you notice a window pops up. And in this window are the three fields that I have currently on my smart list displayed. So if I want to add another column or another field, I hit Add. And now I'm going to put my cursor in the box, lower part of the box, and I'm just going to hit an S on my keyboard, and that jumps me to any field that begins with an S. And now I'm going to highlight State. I'm going to say OK. And now that field is being brought into my Smart List. And you'll notice it's the last one on the list. If it's the last one on the list, it's going to appear on the rightermost column. If I want to change that column position, I can use the arrow keys on the side to move it up or down. And I'm going to move it to the beginning or first column in my Smart List. And then I hit OK. Now you notice that once I hit OK, the data refreshes in my Smart List. And I also have a new column called State and it's in the first position. And now if I were to click off this smart list and go back onto the smart list, you'll notice that that new column that I added did not get saved. The smart list reverted back to its original three columns. So unless you save this as a favorite or a view, any changes you make to any view will not be saved. So let's go back in and we're going to add the state again. Hit OK. And now I'm going to change the position again by using the arrows on the right. I'm going to move it up to the first position and hit OK. And now if I want to save this, I'm going to hit the Favorites button, and it pops me into the Name field. And now each view or favorite needs to have a unique name. So I'm going to call this Customer by State. And the next field, I get to decide how I want the Smart List view to be viewed, or the Smart List favorite to be viewed. I can either have it be viewed by the system, which will be available to any of the databases that I currently have running, or I can have it specific to just the company, or I can have it by user class, or even by user ID, which would mean I would be the only one to be able to see it. So for this particular smart list, I'm going to make it available to the company, and I'm going to hit Add, and I'm going to add the favorite. You can see when I added it as a favorite, it actually put my customer by state over in the list here of views and favorites. And now if I click off it and come back on it, now my data fields are all saved the way I had them. Okay, now I'm going to further define the smart list using a search. 
If I open up the search box, you'll notice that there's four different filtering or search criteria that you're able to use for any smart list. So I'm going to filter this smart list to show only my customers that have over a $10,000 balance. So I'm going to hit the lookup. Once I hit the lookup, the columns window opens up. And you'll notice it brings up the existing columns in my smart list. I'm going to choose customer balance. Hit OK. And now I get to choose what the filtering criteria is. So is equal to is the default, but if I hit the, the drop-down menu, I get several different choices. And so we're going to say is greater than, and we're going to use 10,000 to represent $10,000. So now when I hit OK, you notice that my customer number has gone to 62. And now all of the customers on this list have a balance over $10,000. And now I'm going to save this as another favorite. Customer over 10K. Now I'm just going to save it to my own user ID because this one time when I save it, I'm also going to save it as a reminder on my home page. So instead of choosing Add Favorite, I'm going to add Favorite and Reminder. Now once I do that, the Custom Reminder window pops open, and you can see that I've got the name of the smart list, uh, sorry, the name of the view that shows up, <clears throat> the viewer, the favorite, customer over 10,000, the category shows up, which represents the smart list that this view is associated with. You can see over here, that's the folder name, Customers. And then it shows Visible To. It shows that it's only visible to my user ID. And down in the lower half, I get to choose a radio button that will represent what it's going to show. And I'm going to sh choose Number of Records. So I want this to show when the number of records is greater than zero. So even if I have one customer over $10,000, I want it to show on my home page. And I'm going to also display it as a queue. And I hit OK. Now if we go out to our home page, we have to click off it. and click back on, and you notice we have customers over 10,000. And that'll get us right to our favorite or our view. Okay, and now if we want to further define or further filter this smart list, I'm going to filter it by a class so that I only have the customers in a certain class. So I hit the search box, and now I'm going to open up the second filter using the lookup. Now you notice only the fields that are in my smart list currently show on this window. If I want to see other fields in the smart list, I just have to go up here and click the all columns, and now you'll notice there are more fields available for me to choose from. So now if I go down to Customer Class, say OK, and I'm going to leave it as equal to, I'm going to use USA-ILMO-T1, and hit OK. Now you notice my smart list only shows 17 customers. And these are 17 customers which are in my USA ILMO class.
Okay. Now let's go back to our customer by state. <clears throat> and since we've already developed another customer list, of customers over 10,000, we want to get rid of this smart list. So the way we remove a smart list is we hit the favorite button. And the window pops open and you'll notice there's a remove tab. And this will actually delete your view or your favorite. Now, none of the data is deleted or changed when you do that. Only your view is deleted. You can see I still have my customer balance. I also still have my customers over 10,000. So those are all still there. Okay, let's take a look at receivable transactions. We're going to look at past due customers. And this is a list that shows us more than one invoice for each customer. So unlike our customer list, which has one line for each customer, this list has multiple lines for each customer based on the number of transactions that they currently have. I'm just scrolling down here. Take a look at the data here. So now I'm going to further search or define this smart list. And right now I already have two search criteria that are already set up in this canned smart list, this can view. We've got one filter that is searching by due date when it's less than the current date, which means anything that's past due. And then we have the column name current transaction amount is not equal to zero. So we don't want anything that's fully paid. Just if I jump back here to the smart list, make this a little wider. You can see that we've got two fields that represent a dollar amount. We've got original transaction amount, and we've got current transaction amount. The original transaction amount is the total amount of the invoice. The current transaction amount is the total amount of the invoice less any payment made. So for our search criteria, we don't want to see anything that the current transaction amount is equal to zero because that would mean there's no outstanding balance. We only want to see past due in this case. So now we're going to further filter this. And we're going to go under our customer number. And I, now I'm going to use begins with instead of my equal to. And I'm going to use Adam for our Adam Park customer. And now you'll notice that I have all of my Adam Park outstanding transactions. Now let's say I want to build a favor to appear on my home page that's going to show me when Adam Park has a balance over $5,000. So I hit the favorite button, and now I'm going to put on here Adam Park over 5K. And now I'm going to make this visible to only myself. Now instead of choosing Add, I'm going to again choose Add Favorite and Reminder. And my custom reminder pops up. You can see the information about my view and about my smart list are at the top and who it's visible to. Now at the bottom, instead of choosing the number of records, I'm going to choose the total column. And if I go over here in this field, GP will automatically bring in the columns that pertain to a dollar figure or a numerical amount. 
so that you can choose from. So in this case, I don't want to choose the original transaction amount because that would be my total and my invoice. I want to choose my current transaction amount. And I'm going to say when my current transaction amount is greater than $5,000, then I want to see that on my home page. So I hit OK. And now if we hop over to the home page, sales. I'm just clicking off the home page and clicking back on the home page. And now you'll notice I have my Adam Park over 5000 and they have a $17,000 balance. Okay, I just want to show you something about this other favorite that I have built here for Aaron Fitz. Now on this favorite, we've got a return that appears. And you'll notice this ret return appears as a positive figure. I wanted to point out that in GP, there are no negative numbers in the tables. The tables are all kept with positive numbers. So on certain smart list, instead of getting a negative value for either credits or returns or adjustments, it still comes up as a positive. So you want to be sure to filter out that information if it's not appropriate for what you're looking for. And in this case, we would want to filter out the returns. So if I set up a fourth filtering criteria, I'd want to use my document type as a good way to get returns out. So I'm going to scroll down here to document type. You can see I can use the arrows on the side, or I can use the keyboard. And I'm going to say document type is not equal to returns. I'm going to hit OK. Now you can see that my smart list has now been updated without the returns. OK. Let's hop over to another smart list in financial. We're going to go to bank transactions. I'm just going to remove these for now. We're going to recreate them. Okay. Now first when I click on the bank transactions, you'll notice here that it went to a thousand bank transactions and it was stopped or it was at the max at a thousand records. Most of the smart list views are set up with a maximum of a thousand just for efficiency. So most of the time, the first 1,000 records will include what you need to look for. But there are those special cases when it doesn't. So if you need to see a smart list where you need more than the first 1,000 records, the way you get there is if you open the search, button, the search window, down at the bottom here is a field called Maximum Records. If we change this number in here to a very large number and then hit OK. Now the smart list is able to run the full amount of records that are in the smart list. I'd probably caution you to having this set up for all your smart list because it does use a lot of kind of server time and if you get a number of people running very long smart list, um, it could create a problem. But there are cases when you do need to run it uh, for over a thousand records. So as you can see in my bank transactions, there actually are 2,412 bank transactions in this particular smart list. So now I want to set up a filter for my main bank account. So I'm going to go into the search window and 
to look for my checkbook ID. I happen to know that I have a bank account called Uptown Trust. So I'm going to say, again, I'm going to use our begins with. And I'm going to say, OK. And now you can see that I've got all of the transactions for Uptown Trust in this particular smart list. We've gone to 538. And now I'm going to save this as a favorite. Whoops, forgot to name it. And I'm going to save it to this particular company. And I'm going to add that as a favorite. Now, on my smart list, it would be very helpful if I had some more information. And so if I wanted to get some additional fields on here, I'm going to hit Columns. And let's say also, I'm going to get rid of the Description column because I really don't need that. And you'll find that on some of the smart lists that are the CAN smart list, or some of the smart lists with the particular fields, you may not need them all, or they may not be useful. So to get some real estate on your smart list, you can just eliminate them. I'm going to go in. I'm going to scroll down to a field called Received From. Now I'm going to hit the Control key. And if I hit the Control key, I can actually choose more than one field. I'm going to do Source Doc Number. And I'm going to hit OK. Now you notice I added these two fields into my smart list. And I was able to add them at the same time by using the control key. Now I'm going to say OK. And now what I've got is I've got received from and a source document number. That might give me a little bit more information when I'm looking at my transactions. So now that I've changed this, view since I first created it. I want to resave it. So if I hit the Favorite button, and now I'm going to hit Modify, and it will update it. So if I click off of it and click back on it, now I've got it modified with my two extra fields on it. OK. Now one more filter that I'm going to add on this. Let's say I want to get dates for only the months that I'm currently working in. If I choose GL posting date. Now in the filter, instead of using equal to or begins with, I'm going to use is between. You'll notice when I use is between, an extra field comes up. And for any date field, I can either choose the exact date using the calendar, or there are a number of different settings that I can also use. So I can use beginning of week, beginning of month, beginning of period. And I'm going to choose to set this up for beginning of month and the end of the month. And now I hit OK. So now you can see my number of transactions has gone down to 63. They've been completed for the first group of records where the checkbook ID begins with Uptown and the GL posting date is between 4-1 and 4-30. So now I'm going to save this as a new favorite. If I go in here, I can add this month. And now because I want it to be a new favorite, I'm going to go under Add and Add Favorite. And now I have another favorite or another view. And this view only has my current month's transactions. All right. Let's now go into account transactions. And we're going to go on the sales journal. So here's my sales journal. I have a number of fields on here. Now let's take a look, closer look at the go-tos. If I highlight one of the records, 
you can see that the Go To button activates. Now I can either double click, which will bring me into an inquiry window about that transaction, or I can hit the Go To, and I can now see a few other windows that I can also get to. For example, I can go to Summary Inquiry, which gives me information about this particular account that I highlighted. So this GL account number. And the first view was about the transaction. So it gives me all the accounts in the transaction. If I want to go further in my inquiry, I can hit the underline field here, Source Document. And now this brings me all the way to the sales transaction that this GL account, uh, this uh, journal, was for. We can see it's for a sales uh, transaction to executive resources. So in this way, the smart list can be used for inquiry pretty quickly, just by clicking and drilling down into the different menus and windows. But let's say I want to get some additional information onto my smart list instead of having to drill down. So I'm going to go into Columns. And now I also am going to remove the source document column and also the person who posted column. Now I'm going to go in and add, I want to add information about my customer and about my invoice number. So if I scroll down, first thing I notice is that there is no customer ID in this particular smart list. Now because I'm in account transactions, I kind of know that if we go down to originating documents, there's a group of originating fields here. This originating master ID represents the customer ID. Because we're in the sales journal, the originating master ID is the customer. If we were in the purchasing journal, the originating master ID would be the vendor. So in some of the data sets, you need to look for different fields in a different way. And now I'm going to use my control key so that I can highlight three fields. I'm going to highlight the originating master ID, the master name, and the master document number. And I'm going to pull those into my smart list. So if I were going to use this smart list for anything, the titles of originating document number, originating master ID, and master name really don't tell me much or don't tell me specifically about the underlying data. So if I want to change the name on the column, all I have to do is highlight it, and now I can change the name. I'm going to change this column to invoice number, this one to account number, and the next one to customer name. Now I hit OK. I'm just going to make this a little smaller. Now you can see my three columns that I brought in, invoice number, account number, and customer number, or sorry, customer name on the end here. So now I've got a set of data that's a little bit more descriptive and a little bit more user-friendly than what the actual fields are called in GP. Now let's say I want to want to save this. I'm going to hit my favorite button. I'm going to save this as current sales journal. RN. And now I'm going to put my initials on this. I'm going to save it for the company. And we find that a good practice is to use the initials. Uh, once a view is set up that can be seen throughout the company, any user can modify that view or they can even delete that view. So if by putting your initials on it, it does sort of let everyone know maybe who created the smart list 
and uh, would offer a little bit of, um, you know, understanding behind why the smart list is there. So if anybody changed the smart list, they could uh, have their initials on their view as well. I'm going to add as a favorite. Now this view is here. Now let's say we want to export this information to Excel. Just like before, all we have to do is hit the Excel. Now the processing bar will appear. got the wrong list. And here's my smart list. And you can see the header or the column headings have come through just as I named them. And now I'm able to manipulate this data in any way I'd like to on the Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Let's go over to the items. And I'm just going to bring up my list of items. I want to go through how we can use in the search window. There's a field down here called search type and you either have the option of matching all or matching one or more. So this type of search is a little bit more specific than the match all. I'm just going to go back to our smart list. I'm going to add in a column called item class. So I click on my columns. I'm going to click in the highlight the lower part and click I for item, and now I have item class code. I hit OK. Now I've got item class code here, and I'm going to hit OK. And you can see not all of my items have class codes, but a lot of them do. And if I wanted to get a list of just certain item class codes, I could either export this to Excel and maybe delete the lines that I didn't apply, or I can use the search criteria by setting up my item class code is equal to, and then I'm going to put retail. I'm going to set up another item class code. Another filter is equal to components. And then I'm going to set up a third class code that's equal to catalog. And now down here, under my search type, I'm going to say match one or more. Hit OK. And now you'll notice that our item list has gone to 88. I'm going to put my column back in for item class. And this time I'm going to use the find bar. If I type in item, item class, I say find next. Brings me to item class code and I hit OK. And now I've got my components, my catalog, and my retail all listed on the list. Okay, so just to recap, we looked at how to, how to search using filters. We talked about the fields and the columns and how to add, change position, and change the names. We also looked at how to export to Excel using the go-tos, and saving favorites and reminders. 
And now I want to spend a couple minutes discussing some differences in the data, and then we're going to look at how to export to Word. First of all, just take a look here at my sales data. I go to my customer list. You know, this is pretty much, I have one line for each customer. And in my customer address smart list, I'm going to have multiple lines for any customer that has multiple address cards. So you'll notice some of these have two, and most of them seem to have two. There's some that could have three or four, depending on how many address cards we have. So in the different smart lists, you're going to find different data sets. Also, if we go to sales transactions, in sales transactions, and I'm just going to pull up one of the This go-to brings me to the exact sales transaction entry window. Now you notice on this smart list, it contains most of the information from the header and the footer of the document. So I've got my customer PO. I got my primary ship to address. which appears on my sales transaction. Compare that to if we go into sales line item, and now I highlight one of the lines, and I go to the view. This is actually bringing me on this smart list has more information about my line item. So you can see the item number down here, my quantity, my unit price, and my extended price. And they also have cost in here. So the two smart lists vary a little bit on the actual data that we're looking at compared to lines or he just header information. The other thing that's a little bit different, if I highlight this and go to my Go To button, you'll notice on the line I'm, I'm able to see sales information, customer information, and also item information on my Go To's. So I can go, to, for example, to item maintenance right from the smart list. On my sales transactions, I highlight one of the records. it can take me to sales information or customer information. So it's just a little bit different as to what your underlying data sets are as to what is available in GoTo's and what's available to inquire on. Okay, let's take a look at the letter writing assistant and also do some exporting to Word. So we've got our 1099 vendors here. This is a list of all of our vendors in the system. We're listed as 1099 vendors. Now if I want to export to Word and I just would like to export a list similar to what I can export to Excel, I hit this quick export and now it opens up in Word and I have a list similar to what I would get in Excel, but I'm, we're in Word. Just going to minimize that. Or we can use the prepare a vendor letter option. If I hit that, the letter writing assistant wizard comes up, and you'll notice I have a choice of letters that I can write. And in this case, I'm going to choose the request for 1099. I'm going to hit Next. The Next uh, window brings up, it'll let me choose from my list if I want to send the letter to everyone or just a few people. I'm going to keep it with everyone. 
And now in this area, I can actually change the name of who is going to send this out. We've got John Doe, our AP manager, and we're going to change the email address to John at Fabricam.com. And I hit Finish. And now it's preparing in Word a series of letters to all of my 1099 customers. It's going to talk about requesting the 1094, nine, four, sorry, requesting the W-9 form for them. So now we've got all of our customers in the list, and we've got a Word document that has all our letters pre-made. And if you're interested to know where the letter writing assistant can be found, let's just hop over there and take a look at it. If we go to Administration, and we go to Reports, and then we go to Letter Writing, or you can also get to this by going to Reports from the top menu, down here at the bottom, towards the bottom. And now if we hit Next. We want to prepare letters using the existing letters. You can also customize letters and add new letters to this list that are specific for your business. When I hit Next, I'm giving categories. So we already saw the vendor categories. I'm just going to hop into the customer categories. And if I choose all customers, now there's a group of letters in here that are also available to use the letter writing assistant with. So we've got customer survey, we've got customer contract, and again, you can modify or you can create your own custom letters. I'm just going to cancel out of this for now. Okay, a couple last things. Wanted to show you what the new button is for. When I press this, this brings up either SmartList Designer or SmartList Builder. I currently have SmartList Designer loaded, and SmartList Designer is um, comes standard with GP 2015. SmartList Builder can be purchased. Um, and it has a few more features, but both of these tools are used to create custom smart list, so not the CAN smart list. They do require a little bit of knowledge about GP tables and about joining tables, and also uh, a little bit of programming background is helpful. But what they allow you to do is create smart list with other data that could be available from third-party softwares or SQL views that have been built, um, or you can either you can also modify existing smart list. So it becomes a very handy tool for adding even more data and even more information to the smart list. I just wanted to point that out. All right then. I hope you enjoyed our webinar today on SmartList. And my name is Robin Nixon. Thank you for joining.